God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to the Word of God through Jesus Christ Street and Outreach Ministry. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman Jr. being used by God as the apostle, the teacher, and the prophet over this ministry, the Word of God through Jesus Christ. I'd like to ask you to join with us today for a very informative and powerful show. Please bring pens, uh, some paper to take notes, and your Bible so you can follow along with me in Scripture. And this might be one of the shows where I have one of my friends with me that are also in the Gospel. This ministry networks with a lot of ministers, and the Lord uses this ministry to even give ministers a chance that no one else would give a chance to. So today is going to be a very powerful show. I don't know what God is going to do today, but we are going to find out. The ministry's website is right here, so that way you can go on the website and you can check it out and you can feel yourself around and, and, and look, look on the different features of the ministry's website. Don't forget to sign the guest book and just enjoy yourself. We love you. This ministry loves you so much. And the ministry's phone number is 475 300 Three eight five zero twenty four hours. You can call for prayer, Bible questions, or whatever. But in the meantime, let's go back here and get into the Word and see what the Holy Ghost would have us to study. You see all these books behind me? Come on, let's go. Let's go into the library. And now, to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, with Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. God bless you, and enjoy the message. God bless you, saints. Thank you for tuning in to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ. Street and Irish Telecast. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman Jr., and we are going to have a very powerful time this late night, early morning, and whenever you're watching it in television land. We're going to have a very powerful time, and, and uh, I, I hope you like the temple that's behind me. You see that the court, it's called the Women uh, in the Court, or in the Temple Court, something like that. It's a nice, nice place. You see it? Praise God. Yeah. It is a nice place. Anyway, let's uh, get into this. Um, I, I like to pray first, and I like to ask you to turn your Bible to the book of Ephesians because that's where we're going to start at, okay? Um, thank you for tuning in again. And some of you have been following the series we've been in dealing with 
uh, being in the presence of the Holy Ghost. So far, we've done the office of apostle, God used me as a prophet to defend the office of apostle. Then he used me as an apostle to encourage the prophets and prophetesses and to stand toe to toe with those prophets and prophetesses that are off and wrong and out of order and so forth. And so the next volume is gonna be volume three, which is gonna deal with ministering to the evangelist. It's gonna be called the journey of the evangelist, something like that. And God is gonna use me as a teacher to do that third volume. But he said to me yesterday, pause for a minute. Before, you do, before I use you to do the third volume, start another series and this is dealing with prayer because the season we're in right now, it is very important that us prayer warriors are encouraged, okay? Very important. So I'd like to ask you to, again, turn your Bibles to Ephesians and what the Lord, while you're doing that, what the Lord going to use me to do is just pray over this and then we're going to get down, okay? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for hearing us, for answering us. We thank you, Lord, for being with us, for drawing us unto you this late night, early morning at 3.35 on October 1st in the a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We just thank you. We ask you to forgive us for all of our sins and our shortcomings and our faults and our wrongs. Thank you, Lord, for being where you have the ministry at. Thank you for the work that you called me to do. Thank you, Lord, for the people that you are gathering around their television set and you are preparing to feed them and encourage them and sharpen them in the mighty name of Jesus. I truly thank you for being who you are. Even the attack that the ministry went through, dealing with the equipment as you was using me to prepare and do pre-production, but I still thank you that, Lord, even though we're late starting, that you still told me, don't give up. I just thank you that you hold us to the work you called us to do. I just thank you. We all just thank you. We glorify you in the mighty name of Jesus. Now make me usable and use me. As Satan, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood against you. And we're not worried about you. You have no jurisdiction over us. You can't do anything to us or against us unless God allow it. And if he allow it, it's because there's a glory behind the scene that God's going to get. And there's a victory that he's going to give us. So either way, you don't win. The end of the Bible says that you're going to lose anyway. You're already a defeated foe, and you are going to lose in the last days. You're going to lose. You're going to lose. You're going to be thrown into the lake of fire where you won't be able to do anything else anymore. Anymore. Oh, and before you're thrown in there, you're going to get on one knee, and you're going to say that Jesus is Lord. Father, I just thank you. I just truly thank you and allow me to decrease that you may increase and you do the teaching in Jesus name I thank you and I pray amen the Lord is going to use us to cover several scriptures and again it's it's we're dealing with prayer because right now is a time for prayer Prayer is definitely needed. And there's too many leaders and politicians and governors and mayors that are not praying. It's too many secular people not praying because they, if they did pray, unless they say, Lord, forgive me, and then accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, he's not going to hear them anyway. But those of us that are of the household of faith, those of us that are in the family of God, those of us that are the salt of the earth, that are saved, and those of us that are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, we Christians are the reason that God would heal anything. We're the reason. Not the world. We are. <laughs> Not the buildings. Not the places of worship. Because in a lot of them places, God is not in. But us, people, that have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, those of us that are the body of Christ, collectively, 
We are the reason. We are the reason that God would heal anything because he hears us and he loves us. So right now, this is to encourage the prophets, the prophetesses, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, the apostles, my brothers. This is to encourage you and prayer warriors and intercessors. This is to encourage you. So make sure you have a pen and a pencil, either or, crayon, highlighter, whatever, a Bible, uh, a pad to take notes in, because, again, this is going to be very informative. I'm, I'm led by the Holy Ghost to read Scripture, to set the stage, and then we're going to get into some stuff. Ephesians, this is one of my favorite scriptures. I'll tell you what the text, the base text is after a while. But first, okay, the Lord says skip over the base text and just read the other scriptures to you. I hear you, Lord. Praise your name. But Ephesians 1, and, uh, chapter 1, this verse we're going to read is one of my favorite, favorite scriptures. And it says a lot. And you're, you're really going to get fed from this, all right? Now, Turn to Ephesians chapter 1. I'm sure most of you are already there. And I'm going to read out of the King James Version. Let's so make sure my mic is right. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says, Now those of you that have a King James, you're going to see uh, words italicized and all of that. And I'm going to read it as it's written, okay? So read along with me. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. This is one of my favorite scriptures. Bless, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. I'm going to read that again. Ephesians 1 and 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ, who has, meaning already, blessed, meaning past tense, us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now I'd like to ask you to turn to Luke chapter 18, and let's notice verse 1. I'm still going to stand in King James Version. And scripture reads on this wise. And this was Jesus talking. Scripture says in verse 1, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now I'd like to ask you to turn to Isaiah chapter 65. Got to go into the Old Testament for a few minutes. Isaiah chapter 65, and this is going to really minister to somebody. Now, I know somebody's going to write this down. <laughs> okay. I'm led to go into the, the Living Bible and read it. I don't know why. I love the way it says it in the King James, but the Lord said go here, so I got to be obedient. Isaiah 65. And let's notice verse 24. God said, I will answer them before they even call to me. While they are still talking to me about their needs, I will go ahead and answer their prayers. Let's read that again. Verse 24, Isaiah 65. God said, I will answer them before they even called to me. <laughs> While they are still talking to me about their needs, I will go ahead and answer their prayers. Now let's go to John chapter 14. And we're going to read two verses from there. I'm going to go back to the King James Version. John chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. And these are in red if you have a King James Version. Jesus said, and 
whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And the Lord said, throw verse 15 in there, where Jesus said, if ye love me, keep my commandments. That's what Jesus said. <laughs> Now let's go over to Romans chapter 8, and we're going to start at verse 26 and go to verse 28. Verse 26 says, Likewise the Spirit, capital S, meaning the Holy Ghost, also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit, capital S, in the King James it says, but the Spirit itself, which actually in the Greek it says, but the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, capital S, the Holy Ghost, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And then verse 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Glory. Now let's go to Isaiah again, chapter 55. And let's notice verse 11. Isaiah 55, verse 11. It reads on this wise. God said, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the things, in the thing, excuse me, whereto I sent it. I'll read it again. Isaiah 55, verse 11. God said, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Now, jump over to verse uh, chapter 59 of Isaiah, and let's notice verse 19. Brother Isaiah was used by the Holy Ghost to write this. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, comma, the Spirit, capital S me, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Now, the Lord is leading me to go to our base text. Oh, and you want to write this down. The book of 1 John. And I'm reading out of <laughs> the King James. Now, this is one of my favorite scriptures as well. I can quote this without even looking at it because this, I mean, you, you got to understand what God is saying. 1 John chapter 5 verse 14 and it reads on this wise and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he heareth us and verse 15 says and if we know that he hear us Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. This is volume one of the series entitled The Depth of the Biblical Method of Prayer. The Depth. of the biblical method 
of prayer. And this is volume one. And the title of this little talk is called Bombarding Heaven and Reaching Into the Spirit Realm. Father, in Jesus' name, again, we come before you, ask you to forgive us for our sins. Lord, we just thank you for everything. We ask that you minister to us, talk to us, feed us, encourage us, reveal your truth to us, and assure us that we're on the right side. Not only that, we ask that you show us your glory. Show us that you're with us. Lord, give us your strategy this morning. Tell us what it is that you want to impart unto us. Lord, just, just minister to us from your deepness in the name of Jesus. I don't know why the enemy was allowed to attack the ministry stuff, but I, I, I'm hearing you now and I see that this time of morning the babes are asleep. But those that are warriors, those that are up trouble, those that are, are, are responsible for sheep, those that you have called to put on the front line to work for you, you want to speak to them. To some of us, you want to vent. To some of us, you just want to talk. To some of us, you want to encourage. To some of us, you want to instruct. To some of us, you want to reveal things to. To some of us, you want to warn us. To some of us, you want to bless us to get the jump on the devil. To some of us, you want to tell us what our enemies are plotting against us. Oh, God, you're ministering to us according to the level of faith that we have. And we just thank you. We just thank you. And we glorify you. In the mighty name. And the matchless name of Jesus Christ. And now make me usable and use me. And speak through me. And allow me to hear what thus saith the Lord as well. Because I need you to minister to me also. In Jesus name. We thank you and we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. The title, again, of this lesson is called Bombarding Heaven and Reaching Into the Spirit Realm. There are words that are often used in the Christian faith that are very catchy words. Some words will stir you up in the midst of a battle. There are some words that are so effective when it comes to reaching deep down inside of you that the enemy even uses some people to use those words to manipulate you, to control you. But there's nothing like when God said these words to you because when he says certain things or when he tells you to do certain things or when he reveals certain things to you and it gets deep down in your spirit, it stirs you up and then that river of living water starts to bubble up in you and that anointing that is in you from him. lead you, guide you, and protect you. For those of us that are called and chosen 
It is a great honor when the God of heaven, the ancient of days, day spring, it is a great thing when he began to talk to us and tell us, lo, I am with you always. Oh, even those of us that are in ministry, that God uses us to teach and preach or to teach or preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he gives us catchy sermons. My grandfather, who was a prophet, a teacher, and moonlighted as a pastor. He went on to be with the Lord. His name was Pastor David Lee Knight. Oh, I used to love to go and hear him preach or teach because he would, God would give him things. And there was a couple of times after the Lord put me in ministry and I would hear him minister, I would say, Dad, can I use that? And he would smile and say, sure, go ahead. One of the sermons that I heard him minister was, in him, I find no fault. And he brought that from when Pilate said it. Very powerful sermon because he was telling the congregation, don't pay attention to him, but pay attention to Christ because in him, there is no fault. Now, I know there's a lot of ministers who think that they are faultless, but you're not. Because God said in the book of Romans chapter 3, that there is none righteous, no, not one. That some of you didn't even know God was a mathematician, did you? He said, no, not one. Then he summed it up. He said, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Another lesson my grandfather did that I, I saw him do was called he used to say the devil campaigns also just like God does and he was he was right because the enemy is always trying to gather followers whether he try to steal you from the family of God or not. Whether he just laid claim on you as you're coming in this, this world. Oh, 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 listen. The Holy Ghost is telling me to share a deep thing with you. Listen carefully to this. Okay. God said, go back to Ephesians. And read this before we go any further. So that way you would understand <laughs> why you face the trials that you face. In Ephesians chapter 1, I'm going to read this because this is a very, it's, it's, it's beautiful but it's encouraging. God said, let, let's start. He told Brother Paul to write this in verse 3. Let's start from there. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated that word right there very very powerful word having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will 
to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he hath proposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth even in him in whom also verse 11 we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ predestinated another catchy word so uh, when you say i gave my life to the lord such and such a time uh-uh mm -mm. theologically that's inaccurate why because listen catch this revelation if you are in him for real for real sure enough for real that you have been predestined by him let's go deeper he predestined us because in his omniscient self meaning all-knowing self he knew before the foundations of the earth were laid, when he was planning everything, when he was creating, planning to create everything, he knew whoever you are, whenever you were born, he knew who would say, yes, Lord. And to those of us that he knew would say, yes, Lord, and mean it. He said, that's mine. He said, that's mine. That's mine. All through their life, I'm going to watch out for them because that's mine. But to those that he knew that were going to say no, or that we're going to say yes with their lips, but not with their heart. He said, that's not mine. That's not mine. So, so, uh, being predestined, thank you, Lord. He said it was a two-part thing. He knew, again, who was going to say yes. And he chose, see, okay, Lord. He knew who was going to say yes, and he chose us that were going to say yes. But those that were going to say no, mm -mm, he didn't choose them. Not for nothing good. Not for his glory. Mm-mm. In the book of John, chapter 5, no, chapter 6, around the 70th verse. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back to verse glory. Mm, 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 mm. Let's go way back 
to verse 50. No, let's go. Thank you, Lord. Let's go way back to verse 47 and walk up to the 70th verse. Verse 47 in the King James Version, John chapter 6, Jesus was in the midst of a conversation. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Uh, it's good to study the difference between in me and on me. There's a difference there. We'll talk about that. But you don't have to wait for God to use me to bring it up. You study it on your own time, you and God, in your private time. Ask them, Lord, what's the difference? And make sure you have some resources and your Bible and a pen and so forth in the past. He that believeth on me hath everlasting life, verse 47. Then verse 48, he said, I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. <laughs> if any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Verse 54, Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Verse 59, these things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. The Lord, whenever he went in the temple, it was to teach. It was to correct. It was to put the leaders, the religious leaders, in their place. God wasn't found in the temple then, and he's really not found in the temple now. Watch this. Because if he was in the temples today that many of you go to, then why did they shut down when that demon of coronavirus attacked this nation? <laughs> Uh, wouldn't it be a place that you would run to into the arms of God when the enemy is coming after you? When he's coming after the, the earth, when he's coming after the nation, wouldn't the right place to be would be in the place where God is? Because if we run to him, no demon in hell can touch us. That's something to notice. So when Jesus went in the synagogue, when he went in the temple, it wasn't for him to go in there and sit down and learn from them because he was God. What could they teach him? But he went in there to correct them and oftentimes rebuked them. Hold that thought. In verse 60, many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said this is a hard saying who can hear it meaning who can understand this verse 61 when jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it he said unto them doth this offend you what and if you shall see the son of man ascend up where he was before It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. And right there he's talking about the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost that quickeneth, meaning the Holy Ghost gives you life. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. And they are life. 
Verse 64, but there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning. Did you catch that? For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. So he already knew the disposition of everyone that was around him, of everyone that he came in contact with, of everyone that came to him, of everyone that talked to him. He knew them better than they knew themselves. Why? Because he is the author of life. So no one can fool him. Nobody can say, Lord, if you do this for me, then I'll do that for you. You can't offer God a quid pro quo because he knows what's in your heart and what's not. He knows if you're going to keep your word and if not. Some people have forfeited stuff because they cannot be trusted with what God wants to give them. And they say, I could handle it. No. No. If you could, then he would give it to you. Hold that thought. Verse 65. And he said, therefore, said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. Verse 66 says, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him walk no more with him there's a question that often comes up if a person is it true that once saved always saved yes if you're really 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 saved you will not leave him but if you leave him then that goes to show you wasn't with him Anyway, hold that thought. Let's go further. A few more verses. Verse 67, then said Jesus unto the twelve, will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord. Now remember this is Peter that fell. This is Peter that he says, Satan has asked to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. So he said, Satan has asked to have you that he tear you apart, that he pluck you asunder. But I prayed for you that you don't leave the faith. He didn't say you wouldn't fall. He said that you won't leave the faith. Some of you have left the faith, so you think. And you're going through conviction. That's because the Lord is ministering to you and you do have, watch this. Look at the clock, a comeback date and time. Some have went back to drinking and you're saying, I don't want to do this. I'm doing this, but I don't want to do it. I'm struggling with this. I'm trying to make it through and get out of this. You will. You will. There's some that are saying, I've left my marriage. But I want to, I want, I, I don't feel comfortable away from my husband or my wife. Well, I, I don't know what to do, but you're going to go back. Because that, that you're struggling with, your spirit man, the part that's connected to Jesus Christ, is, is, is warring and with and against the flesh, you. Your human nature. They're fighting. There's a war going on. Your spirit man and your flesh and your soul, which is you, is right in the middle watching this battle. And, and, and you're trying to decide. You're trying to muster up the strength. Who am I going to follow? I, I, I want to go with my spirit man. Because I know that my spirit is connected to God. But I keep slipping, going to my flesh. Because just when I go this way, there's something that the enemy puts in front of me that draws me back. 
Or when I do get there, there's an argument or a problem or something to push me away. But you just have to let God mature you. And if you are in ministry and you're struggling like that, remember these words. The gifts that God gave you are going to bring you through that struggle. You're going to win. You're not going to lose. You're not going to be consumed by the enemy. Our glory to God. Oh, of course, there's some people that say the Bible says God won't put more on us than we can bear. But he never said that. That's not in the word. It's not written. So when people say the Bible said they're lying to you. So don't go repeating something unless you go look it up yourself and see what scripture really says. Hold that thought too. Let's go to verse 60, uh, 60, uh, 67 again. Then Jesus said unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? <laughs> Thou hast the words of eternal life. Or in the Greek it says of life. Meaning eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, <laughs> the son of the living God. Now look what Jesus said. Jesus answers them. Have not I chosen you 12 and one of you is a devil? This is what he said. Or in the Greek, diablos, meaning the adversary. One of you is my adversary. One of you is Diablos. Verse 71 says, He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. For he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Again, some are predestined to go to heaven. Some are predestined to go to hell. And it's a sad thing when people leave this world unsaved. Because when they leave this world unsaved, then that means in the last day they're not going to be saved. And it's wrong when those carnal ministers, it's wrong when those money chasers and those compromising ministers tell people that you are the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ and they're not even following him glory. They're not following him. Back in John chapter 14, in verse 15, Jesus said these words, if ye love me, keep my commandments. See, you can't live contrary to his commandments and think that you're going to leave this world and go be with him. There's a lot of people that have left this world in 2020 who if they could come back now they would come with a, a sermon <laughs> they would come with a whole different story but they would mainly come and say I was wrong I should have accepted him when I had the chance because once you leave this world, that's it. It's a wrap. If you have not accepted him while you are alive, you will not be with him. So stop telling people. Well, they're in a better place. If they're not born again, they're not. Stop telling people. Well, they're not suffering no more. They left suffering. They suffered here on earth. They suffered in sickness. They left. Now they're in a better place. No, they're not. If they're not born again. Thank you, Lord. That's what Jesus meant. When Jesus said these words. When he said in verse 47 of John chapter 6, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting 
life. All right, if you believe in me, I raise you up at the last day and you shall be saved. Yes, but if you believe on me, if you believe on my name, if you believe on everything I did, if you, you know how in the world they say word to who? Or I, or I, I swear on my kids. Or I, if you believe on him, if he is your rock, if he is the one that you bring all your problems to, you believe on him, you trust him. Then he said, you would have everlasting life. And he didn't say will have. He said, he that believeth on me hath. Meaning, have everlasting life. You have it. You have it. You already saved. If you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior, you're saved now. You're just waiting for the time to come when all that mess happens. The tribulation, well, we ain't going to be here during the tribulation. We'll be gone before then. A lot of people don't know that, but we'll be gone before them. Those of us that are in his family, we will be gone before them. Those of us that are in the church, that are part of the church, that are the church, before the tribulation happens. So a lot of people are walking around saying, well, right now we're living in the days of revelation, the chip, the this, the that, the mark of the beat. No, 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 no. When those things happen, the church will already be gone. They already will be gone. We'll be in heaven hmm, with Jesus Christ and with God the Father. And we will be at that wedding feast. And we'll be getting our reward because Jesus Christ will sit on the beam of judgment seat then. The beam of judgment seat. That's the seat that at, a, at the Olympics the judge sits on. And at the Olympics, there's really no losers. You either come in first, second, or third place. Everybody gets a medal. There's no loser. So he'll sit on the beam of judgment seat and give us our reward and we'll have the wedding feast and so forth and so forth and so forth in the meantime all hell i'm talking about the place i'm not cussing i don't cuss all hell will be loose here on the earth going ballistic going crazy going bananas as they say but we won't have no part in that. That, that tribulation is for the Jews so that they'll have a, another chance and they'll be wrung out like a rag. Oh, God, where's my... The tribulation will be for the Jews like the wringing out, or as the older people say, like the wrenching out of a rag. They'll have another chance. They'll have another chance they'll be squeezed out because of the, the tribulation to squeeze them out and some of the gentiles remember john said behold i saw uh many nations i saw a people a whole bunch of people from different tongues different nationalities different nations they will come out of that but those of us that when Jesus come back and we are raptured, we don't have to go through that because we'll be getting our reward. We'll be getting our reward already. Predestined. Predestined. In chapter two of Ephesians, Verse 1, Brother Paul wrote, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. That's talking about Satan, because he is the prince of the power of the air. Everybody want to go and help these other nations that go through storms, tornadoes, earthquakes, 
tsunamis and all of this. They want to go to these places and help. God didn't do it, though. He didn't do the earthquake. He didn't do the tsunami. He didn't do the tornado. The enemy did. And the enemy can only do that in areas that he has access to. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have in you. And all that you are in my life. For all that you've done for thy servant. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how else my life would be without you. As long as I have Jesus, I have a satisfied mind. This is my prayer. Sometimes I don't have